On July 1st, in the very heart of Beijing, there was a special birthday celebration, the centenary of the Communist Party of China. Over 70,000 people from all walks of life gathered in the square to mark this solemn, historic moment. Military aircraft flew over the square in formation, followed by a 100-gun salute and a national flag-raising ceremony. Chinese President Xi Jinping then delivered an important speech. Chinese over the past month, I've traveled thousands of kilometers throughout China to try to understand more about this century-old political party. The story of the world's largest ruling political party has a humble beginning. The year is 1921, the city Shanghai, and the location a two-story brick and timber building in the French concession area. The China of the early 20th century was a far cry from the economic powerhouse it is today. It was weak, poor, and directionless. This is a very typical Shanghai Lane house. But in 1921, something happened that was very atypical. Behind these doors, this one, 106, a gathering of people got together to pull back the nation from the brink of collapse. And it was done in secret. The 13 Chinese attendees represented just over 50 members of the CPC nationwide. Today, that membership is over 95 million. These four walls witnessed the discussion of the party's first program and resolution. And the members setting a seemingly impossible mission to rejuvenate the nation. But that meeting came to an abrupt end when police raided the property. Undeterred and determined, a few days later, the same group of people traveled about 90 kilometers to go from Shanghai to here, Jiaxing, and they reconvened on this boat in the middle of South Lake. And it was here that the meeting was effectively concluded. It was the founding of the CPC. President Xi Jinping said that the Shanghai Lane House and the Red Boat were where the party's dreams set sail. And what a journey it's been. Following the first National Congress, the CPC grew in size and in support as it fought Japanese invaders and a civil war with the Guomindang. On October 1st, 1949, a new nation was born. <laughs> It started a new page in Chinese history. Chinese people have since then stood up. But for this new nation, it is just the first step on a long march. A country that has stood up needs to prosper. If one city epitomizes China's transformation, it is Shenzhen. In 1980, along with Xiamen, Zhuhai, and Shantou, Shenzhen became a special economic zone, a testbed for reforms that would open the economy to foreign trade and investment. These zones were part of a new revolution, reform, and opening up, which was launched in 1978 by former CPC leader Deng Xiaoping. And that would change China beyond recognition. In just four decades, this former fishing village on the east bank of the Pearl River estuary has become a global hub of entrepreneurship and innovation, and a vibrant metropolis of over 13 million people. It's a Chinese miracle. We can reach consensus for 1.4 billion people. And then, based on this consensus, 
we move the nation forward. We do things together with one plan after another. And then also we try gigantic experiments and pilot projects in different parts of China, in different sectors of the economy. And once they are successful, these pilot projects, we began to spread them across China. The success of Shenzhen was replicated across the country. And by 2010, China became the world's second largest economy. But this was just one part of a much bigger picture. By 2012, while many of China's coastal cities were synonymous with robust economic growth, nearly 100 million people, mostly in inland regions, were still living under the poverty line. In November 2012, Xi Jinping became China's top leader. He inherited a mission China had striven to achieve for generations, winning the war against abject poverty. And one of the battlefields for fighting poverty is in the city of Yan'an. American journalist Edgar Snow, who in the 1930s ventured into the red capital of China and penned the book Red Star Over China, called North Shanxi, where Yan'an is located, one of the poorest parts of China. Yan'an is also arguably one of the most important places in the CPC history. This city is located on the lowest plateau in northwest China. Between 1935 and 1948, it was the headquarters for the CPC. The party opened schools, abolished outdated traditions, and began to build a new China. During that period, there was no industry, no electricity, and farming land was scarce. It seemed it would be poor for centuries to come. Today, poverty has become history. In early 2019, the last two impoverished counties in Yan'an shook off poverty. Since 2012, China has lifted its remaining 99 million rural residents out of poverty. In February this year, she announced, China has eradicated absolute poverty that has plagued the country for thousands of years. When the city, like the whole country, has grown wealthier, it has also become greener. And where trees were raised for cultivation some 70 years ago, afforestation is turning the yellow hills green once again. Another reason that Yan'an is so important for the CPC is that it was here that a phrase which has become synonymous with the CPC was first champion. And that phrase is serving the people. For a hundred years, people-centered philosophy has been at the heart of the party's practice. From Mao's serving the people to Xi's giving up the self for the good of the people. If you now come back to the Chinese list, the basic position of the Communist Party of China has been, is, and uh, I would imagine will continue to be, that this is all about the people that unless you hear the people and get the policies right to meet the needs of the people and educate the people about what is and is not feasible, honestly. What we have seen is a party that has never let down its guard, a party that is consistently toiling on behalf of the Chinese people. It is trust, dedication, compassion, devotion, and above all, honesty of the CPC leadership that has led to the historical 100 years of experience. 一百年来，中国共产党团结带领中国人民进行的一切奋斗、一切牺牲、一切创造，归结起来就是一个主题。In 1921, it was the birth of the CPC. At that time, the very survival of the nation was at stake. Nobody could have imagined that China would become what it is today. After completing the building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects for Shao Kang, what more will the CPC create for the Chinese people and for the world in the decades and centuries to come. We're excited to find out.